Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, part four of topic six in our database class, I'm going to discuss the lost update problem. At this point, let's take a look at concurrent processing. And remember, the idea with concurrent processing is that we want to allow more than one person to use the data in our database at the same time. Okay, so concurrent use, we have multiple people using the database at the same time. All right. Now we'll start with a simple example here, one that's not problematic, easy for the database to handle, and then we'll move on to something a little more nuanced. So imagine that, uh, again, time is flowing here from top to bottom. So when we see one, two, three, imagine this is uh, two users who are simultaneously doing these things. Okay? So this is one moment in time, okay? and this is another moment in time, and this is another moment in time. So these things are happening simultaneously. Time one for user A is reading say the value of item 100 maybe it's an inventory scenario so how many of item 100 do we have an in inventory at exactly that same time user b submits a request to read the number of units in inventory for item 200 okay. so the database has to respond to those things and then the users submit their next request for user a they're going to change the number of units in inventory for item number 100 at time two, and at that same moment in time, user B submits a request to change the number of units in inventory for item number 200. Okay. So the database will need to handle that request. And then ultimately, we are going to make that change permanent. Right. So we're gonna commit the change, that is whatever our new value is for the number of units in inventory for item number 100, we make that a permanent part of the database. And at the same time, the database receives a similar request from user number two to do the same thing. Or I should say from user B, uh, except in this case, they're making the a new level of inventory for item 200, a permanent part of the database. So then we can see how the database server might process these things because it can really only do one thing at a time. So although it's receiving these requests simultaneously, like time one, time two, time three, from both users. So we're receiving these requests simultaneously. We're gonna process them in a serial fashion. That is one after the other. Okay. So we received, the database received a request to read the number of units in inventory for item 100 and 200 at the same time. So it arbitrarily needs to select one of those tasks to do first. So maybe it gets the number of units of item 100 first and returns that back to user A's transaction. Okay, so this first step for user A, we handle that. And then we handle the first request for transaction B from user B up here. Okay. And then we process the changes. So maybe we change item number 100 for A, and then we save the results. And then maybe we change item 200 for B and save the results. Okay, now in this case, there's no concurrency problem because our two users are working with different data. Okay, they're working with the same table. So maybe we have some, I don't know, inventory table or item table where we keep track of the number of units, a description of each item and the number of units that we have of it in our inventory. And in this case, user B is interested in working on data related to item 200, while user A is interested in working with data for item number 100. So there's no issue out here, right? We're not trying to use the same data at the same time. And so in a situation like this, there really isn't any big deal with concurrent processing. The problems arise when we want to use the same data at the same time. Okay? And one of the problems that can arise, and we have two or more users, we're trying to simultaneously access or update the same data at the same time, specifically the same datum. Oh, that's a new vocabulary word for us, right? This is a single piece of data. Remember data is plural. So a datum is one unit of data. And so if uh, you can think of it like a value in the database or a cell in a table, right? So if two or more users are attempting to update the same value in the database at the same time, then it is certainly possible for one of those updates 
to overwrite the other update, thus yielding a final result that is inconsistent with what we would expect based on reasonable mathematics or accounting practices. So our expectations on what the final result should be are not going to match what actually exists in the database because in a lost update problem, one of the user's update requests is overwritten by the others. So let's see an example of this. So we have our users, user A and B again. All right, and uh, remember we're working with some inventory scenario here. So we have uh, items in inventory and we want to get those counts and so on. But in this scenario, as opposed to the previous one, in both cases, user A and user B are interested in item number 100. Okay, so they're working with the same item at the same time and they're going to make some requests. So let's see, it was what user A wants to do. Okay. So we're going to assume at the beginning of this process at time zero, that the number of units in inventory for item number 100 is 10. Okay. So before either of these transactions is run, we have 10 units of item number 100 in inventory. Right. And remember in this case, time is flowing from top to bottom. I know that's a little weird because we usually visualize time is flowing from left to right. But for now, just think of time flowing this way. So this is time one, time two, time three. Okay. And time zero is the state of the database before any of these things run. Okay. So two users, they both at the same time request the number of units in inventory for item number 100. Let's say that these are two of our salespeople and they're both selling item 100 at the same time. Okay. So when we begin the item count, the number of units in inventory is 10. Okay. So here's where the problem starts to happen. Okay. So reading it isn't a problem. We tell them both of them, Hey, the current value is 10. And if it stopped there, that's great. But the problem is that they want to change that value. So user A, let's say salesperson A, wants to reduce the number of items in inventory for item number 100 by five. So we can assume from that, that let's say salesperson A sold five units of item 100. And so they want to reduce the number of units in inventory by five. But again, simultaneously, salesperson B over here is also selling item number 100 and this salesperson, we can infer from this highlighted information here, the salesperson has sold three units of item number 100. Okay. So they say, okay, I need you to reduce the number of units of item 100 that we have in our inventory by three, because I just sold three of them. And then at time three, we both users instruct the database to save the results. That is make those permanent. Right, commit that change. So let's see as human beings, what we would expect the result to be if uh, everything were to work out according to some kind of reasonable expectation. Okay. So we start off with 10 units in inventory. Right, so this is just big picture stuff. We have 10 units in inventory. When we start salesperson, a sells five of them. Salesperson B sells three of them. So the total sales of item 100 are eight. Okay. So after we have handled both of these requests, if things work out the way that we would expect, we should have two units remaining of item 100, right? Because 10 minus five minus three is two. Remember our two salespeople together sold eight units. So 10 minus eight is two. We should have two units remaining if things go as we would expect, but that's not what's going to happen because we're seeing a lost update problem here. So let's see how the database reacts to these simultaneous requests to read and update inventory levels for item number 100. So maybe the first thing it does is it reads the number of units in inventory for item 100 for user A says, okay, we've got 10 of these in inventory and it does the same thing for item B or for user B. So now at this point, where we're at this point here between steps two and three, users A and B have been told 
that there are 10 units of item 100 in inventory. So the next thing the database does is arbitrarily chooses one of these things to process. And in this case, it's chosen to handle A's request first. So it says, all right, I need to set the item count to five, right? Because user A said, uh, hey, I sold five of these. So 10 minus five is five. So we wanna set that value to five for A. Okay. And uh, then we store the result. So at this point, after we've completed step four, the current official state of the database is that there are five units of item 100 in inventory. However, we're not quite finished yet because user B still has some work for the database to do. Now, it's going to request that we set the item count to seven. Because if you remember, user B was told that we had 10 in inventory and they want to debit or reduce the number of items in inventory by three. So 10 minus three is seven. Okay. So they are requesting to set the number of units in inventory to seven. Okay. And then we store that result. That is, we make it a permanent part of the database. So by the time we've completed these six steps in this lost update scenario, the current number of units of item 100 that we have in inventory is seven. That's what the database thinks. But we know from our earlier examination of this that it should be two. Okay, so we now have an incorrect value in inventory because we lost user A's update. User A's changes that happened in steps three and four were overwritten by the changes requested by user B. So instead of having the correct number of units in inventory after we complete all of these, which would be two at this point in time, like right here, we should have two units of item 100 in inventory. Instead, the database reports or believes that we have seven units in inventory. So this is a lost update problem, right? Because we don't have any concurrency control mechanisms in place to prevent this kind of thing from happening, the changes that user A made been lost. And again, the only reason that this has happened is because we've had two users who are trying to work with the same data at the same time. So hopefully through this very simple example, you can understand why concurrency control is a big deal. Like we need to find a way of preventing these kinds of problems from happening if we are able, or if we're going to be able to enjoy the benefits of having a multi-user database environment. Right? We need to have ways of preventing this kind of stuff because we want to have our values be accurate. Now, again, if we only have one user using the data at the same time, it's not a problem. Right? This only arises when we're in a concurrent user situation.